Hello guys, welcome to the new video and in this video we will be building a rig but it will be a little bit different than the others that we built previously. Those were built using the gaming motherboards or some random desktop PC motherboards and ATX power supplies and in this video we will be using server power supply along with mining motherboard which is down here. So let me unpack it and show you what we're working with. This is a riserless 8 GPU mining motherboard. It has built-in risers over here. This is not 16x PCIe slots. They don't work like that. So if you're planning to use them for, let's say 3060 version one LHRs, which get unlocked on 16x PCIe slots, these won't work like that. And this motherboard comes with DDR3 laptop RAM. Over here, I have the RAM stick ready. This is four gigs of RAM. That's enough for the mining motherboard. We will be using a USB to install HiveOS on and launch it from here. Another cool thing about this motherboard, it doesn't need extra cables like 24 pin power cable that goes into regular gaming motherboards. It's all powered through PCIe six pins. So if you plug in only one of these, the motherboard will start and boot. So no additional cables are required. And that's very handy when having this power supply over here. This here is HP power supply, 1200 watts, platinum with a breakout board with 12 PCIe slots. And for that I have these cables. It goes six pin on one end and six plus two pin on the other end. For the frame, this is a homemade frame. I designed it myself with a colleague. You can find them online. We will be testing it out. The power supply goes up here. You can insert two power supplies, one here, one here. Motherboard goes over here and the cards face this side so you can attach them on this grip. Everything is pretty tight and it's compact so it doesn't take much space. Firm as well so it doesn't break. And at this point we can start throwing everything together, installing it here and then we'll boot it up. We check how much what it's using only on the system, not having any cards on. And I'll just show you all that statistics. So I'm finished with the installation. Here you can see four PCIe connectors connected to the motherboard over here. I just connected random slots. The most important thing that I connected this first one. Uh, I can remove those three. Uh, I will do that when testing the power consumption. So we could just see the bare minimum of PCU usage and the motherboard with the CPU and RAM and running that operating system. Also, it's very convenient at the front, it has HDMI port over here. So without a graphics card, or if you want to use this as a dedicated display output port, you can use that. And also we have this power button integrated as well. So it's very handy and very accessible, especially in this mining frame. Here I have a couple of buttons that I can connect to this front panel right here for the power switch restart and the third one I'm not really sure of. So at this point, I will just bring it over to my mining room, connect it to the power, connect it to the internet, insert the flash and plug it into the power meter so we could see the consumptions. Here we are in the mining room. I have the USB connected, I removed all the extra ports, left only one to power on the motherboard. Already have the power plug installed to the PCU. It started to spin the fan even though it's not on yet, it's just for cooling and the fan is already taking 9, 8 to 10 watts, let's say like that. So the fan of the PCU is taking 10 watts already without even turning on. So this is plugged into the power meter and at this point we can turn it on. The cool thing with this motherboard is when it gets the power, uh, let's say now when I press the button and turn on the PCU, it immediately boots itself on. So 
you don't actually need to set any bio settings it's already prepared for mining so you don't have to worry about that let's do it here the fan spinning is booting up now it's integrated cpu as well with a mini fan so that's saving some power consumption as well and let's see what the power meter is showing over here we get 33 30 so it margins a bit let's say from 25 to 30 watts oh, it's pretty much stable now maybe it needed a little bit more to boot up and then it drops down yeah so let's say from 25 to 30 watts for the whole system including the fan which alone took 10 watts so if you take that out and calculate only the breakout board the cables all the power loss in the cables the ram cpu motherboard itself reading the usb takes like 20 watts even less than that 15 to 20 watts that's crazy good efficiency as you know we are calculating 100 watts for regular motherboards like that one gaming motherboard we calculate graphics cards plus 100 to 150 watts for the rest of the components here those rest of the components are only taking 25 to 30 watts as we can see here yeah so just wanted to make a quick video about this one since i will be doing some testing on that rig shortly in the next two upcoming videos so if you want to see more testing on that compared to the regular gaming setups where we use gaming motherboards, Ryzen and stuff like that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and wait for those videos coming out shortly. So thank you for watching this one. See you in the next one.